Hi everyone, the Gazette has a new name. It's now called Nostalgia USA, and each month it's getting better. A real entertainment experience. And within each issue, there will be special pricing on selected oldtimeradiodvd.com collections, only available to our subscribers of the Nostalgia USA. Take advantage today by subscribing at oldtimeradiodvd.com. Nostalgia USA, special pricing. What a combination. Go to oldtimeradiodvd.com today. You'll be glad you did. Let's now join our featured presentation. Over here. Was a soap that's pure and gentle. Come on, come on, swing to swan. Lever Brothers, the makers of Swan, the new white floating soap, present the Burns and Allen Show with Paul Whiteman. <laughs> Our singer, Jimmy Cash, yours truly, Bill Goodwin, the six hits and a miss, and George Burns and Gracie Alice. And now we take you to the Burns' home, where George and Gracie are just finishing breakfast. More cream, dear? Another slice of toast? No, thanks. Well, did you notice the toast wasn't burnt this morning? I finally had a man come up and look at the toaster. Good. It's about time. I made him take it apart and check the whole thing. He charged me five dollars, but it was worth it. Found out what the trouble was, huh? Mm-hmm. I was leaving the toast in it too long. <laughs> oh, fine. For another five dollars, you could probably tell you why the waffle line doesn't make coffee. Oh, George. Everybody knows that. There's a shortage of coffee. <laughs> Let's just drop the whole oh, thing. Oh, look, dear. Look out of the window. Where? What? There's Mr. Morton leaving for his office. Oh, thrill divine. Mrs. Morton is walking out to the gate with him. Now she's kissing him goodbye. George, have they been married to each other the same length of time? Of course they have. Why? Well, she kisses like they were just married, and he kisses like they've been married eight years. <laughs> Gracie, you shouldn't watch your neighbors. It's not nice, Oh, you know. you're right, dear. Mm. Oh, look. Across the street, there's Fred Pomtag leaving for his office. And Mrs. Pomtag is kissing him goodbye. Oh, it must be heavenly. Stop being silly. George, I wish you didn't work at home. <laughs> if you had an office, I could kiss you every morning. Well, I do kiss you every morning. I know, but you never give me the pleasure of kissing you goodbye. <laughs> Look, I don't need an office. Well, we're just missing the best part of married life, that's all. Darling, I have no use for an office, and believe me, we're not missing the best part of married life. But in the movies, when Eric Melvin Douglas is married, he always leaves for the office in the morning and kisses Irene Dunn goodbye. Gracie, do I have to remind you that I'm not Melvin Douglas? No, George, you don't have to remind me. <laughs> We've been married for years, and this is the first time you ever mentioned an office. But I thought about it. Yesterday, I thought of make believe that you were leaving for the office. I actually stood in front of the house and waved for five minutes. Just waved to no one? Well, not as it turned out, but they all finally left and went over to the USO. <laughs> Smart piece of waving. Good. All the husbands of the girls in the club have offices downtown. For the last time, sweetheart, I don't need an office downtown just to do our radio program. That little rumpus room we fixed up for me is fine. Well, no, it isn't at all. At night, Blanche Morton can ask her husband if he had a hard day at the office. But how does it sound when I say, did you have a hard day in the rumpus room, dear? <laughs> Gracie, let's drop the discussion now. But, George... Now. Oh, it's my darling little duck. I'm awfully glad you're here, Herman. Mama wants to ask you a question. Now, uh, you're not very proud of your daddy, George, are you? <laughs> but suppose your daddy had a great big swanky office. Then you'd be proud of him, wouldn't you? <laughs> I wonder if they'll ever draft ducks. <laughs> but, Herman, if your daddy has an office, he'll be a big, important man like those men who... Uh, who control the railroad? And then he'll take you on the choo-choo. Why, <laughs> 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 so, 
Really? That's the best imitation I ever heard. Mama's so proud of her clever little boy. Oh. Oh, that's fine. A ham with drumsticks. <laughs> Gracie, maybe you've got something with that office. At least I'd get away from that silly duck. Oh, that's wonderful. You hear, Herman? Your daddy's getting an office. He's going to be a big businessman like Henry Kaiser. Do you know what Henry Kaiser builds? Uh-huh. <laughs> Herman, I'd just like to remind you one thing. The government needs fat. Uh, they need it for bullets and bombs And they want us to take it to our meat dealers right now Herman, what are you doing this evening? Go on, go on, go on George Feed it, 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 feed it. <laughs> George, I'm going to run up and get my hat Uh... What did you say, dear? I'm going to get my hat and we'll go right out and pick out an office. Okay, dear. Hi, George. Hello, Gracie. Oh, hello, Bill. I'll be right back, George. What's going on, George? Oh, nothing. I'm going to work in an office. Work in an office? George. What? If I catch you sitting on the boss's lap, I want my ring back. <laughs> Stop being funny. I'm going to rent an office for myself. Oh, well, you're lucky I came over. I know a girl who's a great secretary. Her name is Gwendolyn. Well, I don't want a secretary. Oh, but she's great, George. Her shorthand is sensational. I just... Listen, the other day I dictated a letter this fast. Now, get this. Uh... Dear madam, in case you haven't heard about it, Swan is the new pure white floating soap that's great for washing the dishes. Mm. Because Swan gives you suds faster than any other floating soap. And that's true even in hard water. Yeah, but I don't want a secretary. And George Gwendolyn read that letter right back to me. She read it... She read it back to me in shorthand. She said, dear ma'am, why a new white floor so that a great for forget what it, the dead? Forget it, forget it, forget it. <laughs> Look, I, I, I don't need a secretary. I'm just but George. Get a little, a little, Gwendolyn, a little... Gwendolyn is the Toscanini of the keyboard. Uh, really? Yes, yeah, well, she I types do... 160 words a minute. You ought to see those beautiful white hands flying over the keys. And why do you think she has beautiful white hands, George? Why, Bill? I'll tell you, George. <laughs> Well, sir, she uses Baby Gentle Swan for every soap and water job in the house. And no matter what you use Swan for, whether it's washing the dishes or some hankies, hose and undies or anything, Swan is kind to your hands. That's why, George, and I'm glad you asked me. Bill, I don't care if Gwendolyn uses Swan to play her mandolin. But, George... See, I'm not using a, a George, who will write your letters, answer your <laughs> phone, and remind you of things you mustn't forget? Like the fact that Swan saves you money. Because with Swan in the house, you don't have to buy easily wasted packets. Okay, soap. okay, stop t- t- talking. I'll hire her, I'll hire her. Hire her? You can't hire Gwendolyn. She's got a job. And she's crazy about her work. Why did you do all that talking? Well, George, I don't exactly hate my work either. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> At breakfast, I'll bet he wears a green wrapper with a white swan on the front. Oh, uh, George, while I was putting on my hat, I was thinking how wonderful your office is going to be. You are? Mm-hmm. Monday morning, you'll kiss me goodbye, and Monday night, you'll kiss me hello. Oh. And Tuesday morning, you'll kiss me goodbye, and Tuesday night, you'll kiss me hello. Uh, and Wednesday morning, you'll kiss me goodbye, and Thursday morning, you'll kiss me goodbye, and Thursday night, you'll kiss me hello. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I didn't come home from the office Wednesday night. <laughs> you didn't? Well, don't let it happen again. <laughs> What? The idea of leaving your poor little wife home slaving oh, over a hot stop stove it, you're having a daytime in your it. office. This is Paul Whiteman. Tonight, Jimmy Cash sings of a time we all hope will come soon. When the lights go on again. All right, Jimmy. When the lights go on again, all over the world, and the boys are home again, all over the world, and rain or snow is on. Fall from the skies above A kiss won't mean goodbye But hello to love 
when the light's gone again all over the world, and the ships will sail again all over the world, then we'll have time for things like wedding rings and dreams. Gee, this office building looks too expensive. I'm going across the street and try the other one. All I need is just a little cubby hole. Well, I'll it's... talk to the manager and see what he's got here. Yeah, but don't look at anything too expensive. Well, you don't have to worry, dear. You know what I always say? A pound of pennies is why foolish. <laughs> well, I know you always say that, but all I want is just a little cubby hole. I'll be right back. Oh, all right. Oh, let's see now. Oh, here's the manager's office. Um, uh, are you the manager? Yes, indeed, little lady. Well, uh, my husband, my husband would like to rent one of your offices. Oh. Uh, just a small cubby hole. Oh. Uh, well, not too small, of course. Sort of a medium-sized cubby hole. Oh. Uh, you know, like an office, like a large office. Oh. He, he'd like a big suite with three big rooms. Oh. Oh, well, I have the very thing you're looking for. Now, uh, if you'll just sign this lease. Oh, now, wait a minute. I'm much too careful to rush into anything that quickly. Oh, I, I see. Uh, has this suite got windows? Oh, yes, indeed. Oh, good. Where do I sign? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right on that dotted line, little lady. Here's a pen. Thank you. Gracie Allen Burke. There you... Oh, my goodness. Hmm? This lease is for 99 years. Is something wrong? Well, you see, my husband is a very healthy man, and he'd be upset if the lease expired before he did. Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, uh, I wouldn't worry about it, little lady. Uh, now then, uh, what kind of office furniture will your husband require? Well, I don't know. What do you usually put in your offices? Oh, it all depends on what the office is used for, madam. Could be desks and steel files, a cabinet for law books, a dentist chair, an operating table, a stock ticker. Well, that sounds satisfactory. Uh, uh, which? All of them. <laughs> All of them? Of course. Little lady, do you happen to be married to Orson Welles? <laughs> oh, no. His name is George Burns. And that's the name I want on the door. George Burns Limited. With that office equipment, I hardly think he will be. I'll say. <laughs> what? I said with that oh, never office... never mind, never mind. I think I'd like to see the suite now. Oh, yes, of course. It adjoins my own office. Uh, just right out this door, if you please. <laughs> Oh, here's my husband. Now we can see it together. Gracie, Gracie, I saw the cutest place across the street for only $25 a month, just exactly oh, no, what wait, I wanted. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. I want you to see the little place I picked out. You picked out? Uh-huh. All right, Mr. Manager, open it up. <laughs> Gladly. There. Isn't it snug? Isn't it cozy? Snug? Cozy? Yes. And just think, it's yours for 99 years. Oh. <laughs> what an office. Six filing cabinets, five desks, 12 chairs. What a job moving this furniture in here. George, you'll, you'll have to move it all out again. Move it out? Why? It spoiled the echo. Look. <laughs> Gracie, will you sit down? All I wanted was one little room. And I've got an office you could hide a flying, a flying fortress in. Oh, but now I can kiss you every night when you come home. If, if you had a little office, I, I'd just give you one little kiss. But you've got a big office with three big rooms, so I'll give you three great big kisses. No, oh. Glad you didn't rent the whole floor. I'm not as young as I used to be. <laughs> That's funny. Who knows we're here? Well, it's probably the girls from the employment agency. I told them you'd want a secretary. Now, wait a minute. All I wanted was just a little copy hole. Well, I don't all wanna... big men have secretaries, George. You can take one of these girls temporarily, and then later on you can hire somebody more experienced, like Secretary Morgenthau or Secretary Hall. <laughs> Look, Gracie... Come in. We 
we're from the Acme Agency. Are you the party who's looking for a secretary? Oh, yes, I'll interview you both. Uh, your name is? Lucille Helt. I'm very good. I'd still be working if my last boss hadn't been drafted. Before he was drafted, he was in women's dresses. <laughs> well, uh, I suppose it takes all kinds to make an army. Um, Lucille, uh, what would your salary be? Well, um, 20 a week. 20 a week? Oh, that's not enough. You should get at least 35. Oh, that'd be wonderful. Well, in fact, for a girl who's really a good secretary, I don't think $50 is too much to you. Oh, no, $50 would be fine. Well, I'm sure you're capable, Lucille, but that's a little more than my husband can afford. Next girl. <laughs> Gracie, she said she'd work for... Please, tw- please. Uh, what's your name, miss? Uh, Geraldine Bojo. And I'm very good at taking shorthand. Well, I'll try you out. I'll dictate a short business letter to you. Ready? Mm-hmm. Um, George Burns Limited. Dear Limited, we, uh, we received your contents and the 15th inch was duly noted. Thanking you in the past for advanced favors, we are. Now, read it back. Um, George Burns Limited, Dear Limited, we received your contents and the 15th inch was duly noted. Thanking you in the past for advanced favors, we are. Oh, I'm sorry, Geraldine, but that letter doesn't make a bit of sense. Next girl. <laughs> Next girl. Now, oh, dear. She was the last one. Well, good, good. Forget the secretary. Oh, no, George. I'm going to keep trying until I find you a girl who is intelligent and capable and clever and... Well, I know just the girl. Well, all right. Send her around next week. Oh, why, wait. I can start right now. Go ahead and dictate. You? Yeah, me. Oh, <laughs> Six hits and a miss, and the boys in the band and one of Jerome Kearns and Johnny Mercer's very, very best, Dearly Beloved. office is ridiculous, Gracie. Miss Allen, please. What? Well, I'm just your secretary now, so you better call me Miss Allen. Or Toots. <laughs> I, uh, Toots. Yeah, and I'll call you GB. GB? That's office talk for George Burns. You know, your initial GB. I don't want you to call me GB. But that's the way it's done, dear. My sister Bessie used to be secretary for a man named Philip Simmons, and she always called him FC. 
<laughs> I don't care what your sister Bessie did. All I wanted was Isn't a little cubby fun hole. being a secretary? <laughs> I hope I don't make a great big fool of myself and fall in love with the boss. <laughs> oh, stop. I'll be the laughing stock of all my friends. Oh, don't you worry, dear. They laughed at all great men. They even laughed at Lincoln. But he went right ahead and invented the highway. <laughs> All right, all right, I would... Don't get excited, G.B. And quit with that G.B. G.B., what is this? Probably the janitor. Come in. Oh, wait, George. The secretary does the work. Come in. Thanks, thanks. Holy smokes, what a place. Do you like our little office, Bill? Well, yeah, I've always wondered how the Rose Bowl would look with a roof. (laughs) You haven't seen anything, Bill. Look at this. Where's the barbecue pit? I've got three rooms like this, and it's silly. I've got no business. No one wants to see me. Oh, oh, hey, excuse me, boys. I'm going out into the hall. Tracy. Yeah, I've got an idea. Hmm. George, why don't you get a smaller office? Why? Because the landlord had Gracie sign a 99-year lease. A 99-year lease? Why, he can't do that, George. Give me that phone. I'll break that lease for you. Well, how can you break the lease? Listen, I didn't go to law school two months for nothing. <laughs> Hello, landlord. I'm calling for George Burns. Now listen, you unethical, money-grabbing old... Me? Mm. I'm Bill Goodwin, and I'm telling you that if... You do? Well, gee, it is a wonderful soap, isn't it? (laughs) Bill, Bill, the lease. You said something about breaking the lease. Yes, sir, landlord. That's exactly what I always Uh, say. Swan is the new pure white floating soap that's a honey for suds. mm. Yes, sir, I never saw such suds in all my life. Fast, too. Look, Bill, you came in, you said you had an idea Oh, your wife, too, huh? uh, About... uh, Well, why shouldn't she be? Especially since there's a little baby in the house. mm. Swan's perfect for bathing the baby. It's as mild and pure as the finest Castile soap. That's what makes it so swell for your face and hands. Yeah, like peaches and cream. At least, Bill, break it, break it, break uh-huh. it, break it, break oh, it. Oh, oh, yes. Break it. Oh, landlord, Mr. Burns suggests you break it. Break it, break it. Yeah, break, break it. Swan in two. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Use half in the kitchen for dishes and housework and put the other half in your bathroom for your shower or tub. Look, Bill, you brought this on yourself. Oh, you see, that's great. Just own. great. A, a oh. cake of Swan in every office. Oh, thank you. Goodbye. Well, that's a fine way to break a lease. Now, wait a minute. You want to break the lease with a landlord who's going to give swan soap to all his tenants? Why, shame on you. It's men like you who cause bottlenecks. <laughs> leaving so soon, Bill? Well, yes. Gracie, your husband is without a doubt. Who's your friend? Oh, him? Well, he's the gentleman I found out here in the hall. What'd you say your name was? William Murray. Uh, Mr. Murray is going in to see George. Oh, well, chins up, Mr. Murray. So long. All right, Mr. Murray. G.B. will see you now. Well, what do I want to see him for? Well, Mr. Burns just opened this office, and you can be his very first customer. But I can't afford to buy anything, lady. You see, what was the $25,000 ceiling and the fact that I ain't worked in 12 years? (laughs) Why, it won't cost you a cent. Everything is with our compliments, absolutely free of charge. Go right in. I'll wait out here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, <clears throat> yes? Uh, I do. <laughs> I do? Nice office you have here. Thanks. Big. Yeah, yeah. Mighty big. Mighty big, mighty big. <laughs> uh, who are you anyway and what do you want? I'm, I'm your first customer. Customer? Yeah, I'm kind of in a hurry, so if you don't mind, I'll just take one and go. Take one what? I don't know. What business are you in? (laughs) Radio programs. Well, you better give me just a small one. I don't use them very often. (laughs) Look, bud, you must be in the wrong office. I don't give away any samples. Now, there's the door right there. Yes, sir. I'm sorry I took up your time. That's all right. Goodbye. In case I don't see you again, I'd like to wish you a very merry Christmas. Out, 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 out. Well, did you enjoy your visit with D.B., Mr. Murray? He gave me a brush. Oh, well, that's nice. Take care of it. You never know what they'll ration next. <laughs> Come again. Pardon me, miss. I'm looking for the office of Rubicum and Young, attorneys at law. Well, go right in. G.B. will be glad to see you. 
Oh, is G.B. Rubicum or Young? Well, uh, he's not young. <laughs> well, then he must be Rubicum. I'll go right in. Good afternoon. Yes, what is it? I'd like to divorce my husband. <laughs> Well, what's that got to do with me? You're the man I want. <laughs> Who, me? Yes. I want you to go to Reno with me. What? I'll pay all your expenses. Well, gee, this is very flattering, lady, but, but, you see... You then see... you'll go? Well, look, I'm a married man. I, I, I... What difference does that make? You're a lawyer, aren't you? A lawyer? I'm no lawyer. Oh, so you just wanted to hear my troubles, huh? Curious, huh? Oh! Hereafter, you can listen to Mr. Anthony. Uh, what's going on around here? Uh, this way, Mr. Davis. Another customer, GB. So you've been sending in these people. Lady, I'm sort of in a hurry. Oh, well, and I... a GB will take care of you right away, Mr. Davis. Gee, lady, I don't what know. What is this? What does this guy want? Well... If it's all the same to you, I'm sort of in a hurry. Oh, oh, your worries are over, Mr. Davis. Just ask my husband about whatever's on your mind. Go on, ask him. Okay. Hey, mister, is there a place on this floor where a fella could wash his hands? <laughs> out, 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 out. <laughs> you and your ideas. This office will drive me crazy. And I'm stuck, stuck with a 99-year lease. Oh, you're it's... worried about the lease? Well, I'll break it, that's all. That's all, huh? Well, where's the phone? Hmm. Just like it, that's all. Hello? Oh, boy. Hello, is this the manager? Well, this is Mrs. Burns. I'd like to break my lease, please. You will? What? What? Oh, all right. Well, thank you very much. Goodbye. Well, it's all settled, dear. Come on home. You mean you got me out of the lease? Well, sure. All you have to do is pay him for 98 years. <laughs> 98 years? Mm -hmm. He's given us the last year free to keep our friendship. Oh, <laughs> George and Gracie will be right back. So I'm just going to say this. One thing you can be sure of about Swan Soap, it agrees with your skin. And while it's just common sense, if you've got to keep your hands in water dozens of times a day, you might as well be using a soap you know will be kind to your hands. Remember that about Swan, huh? Well, now here are George and Gracie. Oh, well, after a day like that, it's sure nice to be home in bed. Thank goodness that fellow finally tore up the lease. Good night, sweetheart. Good night, G.B. I'll stop with that GB. From now on, that office talk is out. All right, George. Well, PD. PD? That's office talk for pleasant dreams. Oh. <laughs> Makers of Swan, the new white floating soap, join George and Gracie in inviting you to tune in again next week, same time. These programs are shortwave to our armed forces everywhere. Remember, Swan now brings you two of radio's top shows. George Burns and Gracie Allen every Tuesday night, and Tommy Riggs and Betty Lou every Friday night over another network. And until next week, this is Bill Goodwin saying, Well, I, Swan, how about you? <laughs> <laughs>